This is the hour, the darkest place Dante's inferno, the devil's maze It's a good world It's a good world Good world gone bad What's up you guys? So it's been a while since I've been able to go out fishing, but Today I'm actually going, I'm all packed up, I'm on my way to California. So first we gotta get out there and I'm starting to run a little late, so I'm gonna get going. I'll tell you one thing, it's gonna be nice to see some sun. It's always foggy here. Hey, how's it going? Good, how you doing? Good, thanks. Thanks there a lot. You Thank you very much. All right, so I made it. I just wrapped up a conference I had in LA. I grabbed a rental vehicle, so this is like four days later than when I left off. I didn't do any filming during the conference because you, you guys don't want to see that. That's all science related. Uh, so now I have no idea where I'm going and I'm not used to this traffic. I mean, I'm from Maine. So this, this right here, there's so many lanes. I have no idea what really is going on, but it's kind of fun. You can dart in and out of traffic. I don't know. It's a little more entertaining than 995 with two lanes and no one there. So this is going to be a cool trip. I'm actually going to be camping out of this van. I'll show a lot more about that later. And I'm heading out to uh, Kernville, which is up towards Sequoia National Park. I'm going to do some fishing up there for part of today into tomorrow, and then it's going to go from there. And so this is just going to be a big road trip where I'm just going to be traveling around, fishing different locations. I'm really excited to do this, but. Right now, we got a long road ahead of us. Luckily for you guys, I can just skip you ahead with a nice little montage of the driving, and so I'll see you out there. Wow, this is awful. It's getting a lot worse. That's bad. That's why the smoke was so black. It was burning rubber. Oh man. Jeez, it looks like <laughs> it looks like a war zone. I feel bad for those people who lost their vehicle in that fire. That's that's really terrible. We are 14 kilometers from Kernville, so we're so close now. And it's about four o'clock, so I might be able to get some fishing in. That way I'll have food for tonight. In a high tomorrow, 100 degrees, 93 the high here in the Kern River Valley today, 66 overnight, 92 with some high clouds tomorrow, 86 degrees Wednesday. That's a look at your latest from Kern River Radio, and when you want it, at kernriverradio.com. Here's another That's what I'm talking about, right there. Alright, well I made it, and this this is what I'm going to be fishing, it's right through here. So it's probably hard to see it, but this is Lake Isabel, so I'm going to be fishing up, I'm right here right now, up Kern River. 
Um, it sounds like the creeks are good, so maybe it'll just dip up in these areas. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. Should be fine. They have uh, golden trout here, which is really cool. Oh, bad news, can't find any camp fuel. Everywhere's closed down because I got a later start. So, I was told to check a grocery store. We're gonna check that, and if I can't find anything, I don't know what I'm gonna eat tonight. <laughs> Something pretty simple. I gotta get a fishing license too, so let's get on this so I can get going. Start to get nervous. Good news. Oh, come on. Oh, it's automatic. Wow, I'm just I'm just really fancy now. Look at that. That's that this car is a little too much for me. Let's see, I got the golden ticket here somewhere. There you go, so I'm legal. Now I bought some rice, I got a portobello and a bell pepper. So that's the plan for dinner, but that sounds kind of weak without some fish. So I got maybe three hours, I gotta go up the Kern River and hopefully we're gonna catch a fish. Uh, if so, I'm gonna do a catch and cook. So let's get out there. I love to catch a golden trout, but I don't wanna eat a golden trout. In fact, it's probably illegal to eat a golden trout because this is their a native habitat and I know they're threatened so I'm not gonna do that. We do need a rainbow and that way we can eat it. I have the rules. I gotta read up on that. So anyway, let's get out there, let's get fishing and catch some good ones. They're gonna be relatively clear and 70 overnight. 98 they're on. How's it going bud? Oh geez. I didn't know there were cows out here. Oh, there's one over there too. Look at the size of that thing. Hey! Oh my god, they couldn't they couldn't care less. Oh there's the sign, yeah, a little late. Watch the cattle. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I thought it was a moose. I'm so used to a big black figure being a moose. No, just cows out here. That was weird. So that river is super high. I don't think you can see it, but I mean, when they said a total blowout, they meant a total blowout because it's running everywhere. It's in the trees, so I I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm gonna go find a creek, hopefully, if I can find one, and try to fish that. That's almost unfishable. It also looks kind of dangerous. So. Alright, so obviously I can't fish that. Yeah, it's going really fast, obviously. But uh, further upstream, there's some good spots. I think we should be able to, to pull some fish out of there. And uh, just, you know, catch a couple. And that way we can just cook a really quick dinner. Like, for example, this first bowl. That one's pretty good. So we'll start with that and then work our way up to the bridge. Um, yeah, I, I really think we'll be able to get a couple. So. Get out there and do it. This is, I don't know, Bush Creek or something. Yeah, it is Bush Creek. Bush Creek. Okay, only artificial. Barbless, noted. All right, so I can get two trout out of there. I gotta use a barbless hook, so I'm gonna have to pinch mine. Although I do have some barbless hook, I'll probably try to grab some of those. I can get two fish. That's enough for dinner. Next step, flies. I'm thinking, I don't know what I'm thinking. I could go midge, worm. 
streamer. Maybe I should do some streamers. Something small. Sunny day, white maybe. Oh, I think I might start with a small worm. Just a single tie. I gotta catch a fish and cook dinner here soon. So let's do that. This red one, it's a little bright today. So I'm gonna use this blood red worm. A little, it's got a little tiny gold bead on it. I know it's gonna be hard to see for you guys, but that is what I'm gonna start with for now. Next step, pinch the barb. Now that makes me nervous. I'm not worried about too much else, like the water. That's, you know, just pay attention, but snakes, not used to snakes. Ah, oh, that snake sign got me so worried now. I'll get used to it. It's just gonna take a day. All right, you see that nice pool back there? That's what I'm gonna cast into. And from there, I'm gonna move around hopefully find some fish, but I really, I need to pull one out of there if I want dinner soon. All right, so right off the bat, I look for some fish. I have uh, some polarized glasses I use. I don't really see too much, so what I'm gonna do is put on a little bobber and then cast it out there. Or I guess it's a strike indicator, essentially a bobber. I'm gonna fish this spot pretty carefully because I do not want to miss a fish if there is one right here. So you start close, and then you move to the back. So I want to hit that hole, but I want to make sure I don't spook anything here right off the bat. All right, one of them just hit my indicator. That's a good sign. New spot. Ooh, that looks nice. If I could dead drift that. Right down in there. I can approach it without getting my shadow in it too. Okay. I feel uh, I might get some dinner here. Really need it. Oh, that's fast. Oh, getting low on daylight. You gotta make this happen. This is a nice hole. This is probably super fish too though. There we go. Got one. Just a little guy. All right, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and keep this one, just because I really need some dinner. I can keep any size. He'll make a meal for me. I need, I can catch two, so I'll catch one more and have a dinner. That is one in the bag, one to go, and I've got dinner. This is a good spot. I think I can get one right out of this rock. It's a tough spot to get to. There we go.
It's a nice fish. Well, small one, but beautiful. Oh, there he goes. I think I can get another one in here. They're jumping at the, the indicator. You seen that? Bite the fly, bite the fly. I'd tie on a dry fly, but I'm just kind of lazy right now, to be honest. Oh, again on the indicator. I might have to do that, and again, and again. I'm gonna switch it up to a dry fly because that seems to be what they're always taking is my indicator. Which is really what you wanna see as a fisherman because it's a lot more fun to fish top water. Although I think the biggest reason for that is simply because these are small fish. Small fish are less picky, but they taste just as good, so you know. Look at all the birds in here. There's nests everywhere. Now, come on, fish. It's a very deep spot. Keep going. About all I can do. I don't want to hook a bird. Yeah. That's more like it. Come on. Ooh. All right. Now that is exactly what I needed. This is our second fish. Now they aren't huge, but you know, that's enough for food for me. Uh, he's gonna make uh, a great addition to my rice, so I'm excited. We got our two fish, now let's go cook. I can get used to this. This is nice. Okay, we got our two fish. All right, well. Brake, button. I'm never gonna get used to this thing. Oh, can't play that. Well, we got our two fish and uh, that, was, that was great, that took me about an hour, it took some time to get used to the water, plus uh, to find out that they actually didn't want anything, or at least they didn't want that worm that I was throwing under the water. They really, they really wanted to just have something on the top water, so there must be some kind of hatch, or those were also small fish. Small fish aren't that picky, so uh, it could be a little bit of that. But now I got an hour before that sun goes down. I'm gonna see how much of this fish I can cook up before that happens, so that way you guys can really see it. Let's get out there, find a cool spot, and then cook them up. Oh, not in my truck, I gotta remember. Rocks are not good when you don't have 10 ply tires. Oh man, this valley is gorgeous. I did not expect this area to have so much terrain, to be honest. I'm excited to really explore it tomorrow. I should probably put my seatbelt on because we see one of those famous giant cattle floating around here somewhere. There we go. Safe. Ah, oh, this is cool. Look at that, just touching the, touching the tip of the mountain there. I found the spot. Check that out. This view is so much better than LA. Up dinner right here. I mean, we're losing sun quick, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started on that. And 
Yeah, I'll, I'll show you guys the process. I'm really cool with that. So the reason I got a van is because of, I don't know if I can do it. How does this work? Pull. What happens? Oh, and then you pull here. And that just tucks away. So this is going to end up being my bed. That's so nice. Just fold right away. Start off cutting up our veggies. Now I don't have a lot of time, so we're just gonna slice and dice things real quick. So I picked up this jet boil, and I've wanted this for quite a while, but the uh, they, they're so damn expensive. And so I, I put that off for quite a while, and uh, I really wanted this thick one. It has wide brim. And so I, one of the big reasons why I wanted this stove is because it has a very fine tuning dial. And because I do so much cooking, and not necessarily just trying to boil water as fast as possible, that's the way to go for me. I didn't screw it on right. And so that this really fine dial that we have here is really the way to go. Um, it allows me to use it in a variety of temperatures. Being normally in Maine, that's a kind of a big deal for me. It's going to be a, a really good system for me to use. Let's just get to cooking then, huh? So I also have this really nice pot that I'll use. And I forgot to pick up butter, so we're going to boil with water today. I think I'm going to start with the fish. So I need to cut up the fish. I'm going to cook in the vehicle. It's a little breezy outside. I think it's good enough to cook up our trout. So we're going to pop those guys in there. All right. That's starting to smell pretty good. I think those need a flip and I need to get my veggies in there. So let's go ahead and see if I can do this while holding a camera. Yep, yes I can. Just that, just that, that skilled. Okay, this is gonna be difficult. Yeah, it doesn't look pretty, but this today has been kind of a sporadic day. I need to get out here. It's gonna suffice. Just a little boiled dinner. I do have rice. I'm gonna throw in there. I might even, I might even put the rice in a little bit after, just to make uh, make it a little easier. I should be eating in no time. And that's pretty much going to mark my evening. Now, I'm definitely going to stay here because it's such a good spot. So I'm going to actually stay the night here. And so I'm going to wake up into the, I'm going to wake up in the morning to that view. And in goes some rice. This is just like instant rice. Originally, it was kind of just a backup plan if I didn't catch anything. But since I did catch something, it's going to turn into a breakfast for tomorrow, and I'll have a pretty hearty dinner tonight. Hopefully, hopefully it's just going to peel off the bone just like brook trout. I've never actually caught or eaten rainbow trout. I forgot to mention that. So this was kind of an exciting day, and is also it's a first for me in many ways. So... It's been a good day for sure. They're just about done and ready to eat. So let's see here. Very nice. Just peels right off of them. No wasted meat there.
So you just grab them by the bone and then flick those sides. Just barely peel them and they should just flop right off. Leaving you just the ribs. There. So this is a pretty simple meal and I'm really liking my jet boil. It's cooking nice and steady. It's not burning the bottoms and even it is in water, but still the flame control on these things is very impressive and I'm, I'm happy with it. It's a very packable size. Of course, I have it on this giant tin, but you can also get like very small ones. So they pack up really nice and tight. I really like them. I, I think they're a great, a great stove. Of course, there's cheaper alternatives, but there's just a lot of specific things about this that I felt would really be beneficial to me, and so therefore making it worthwhile. So here goes sun setting back here. What a view. And I'm the only one up here, which is unbelievable to me. It's just really unbelievable. Sure beats LA. LA, there's so many people around. It gets kind of hectic, and I'm not used to that. This is this is my setting that I enjoy. Peaceful, quiet, and good food. Whoa. Sorry, I don't like bees. Not sure if I'm allergic, I've never been stung. Okay, my meal is done. I gotta find my utensil. I couldn't find my utensil. So today I'm just getting set up, so everything's kind of scattered. I'm gonna make my bed after this. And of course I'll show you guys all of this. I don't know if it'll be in this video, the next video. I have no plan. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to eat this with a bottle opener as help. I'd make chopsticks, but if I wait that long, you guys won't be able to see anything. So, I mean, there's got, there's nothing fancy about this meal. There's no spices in it, nothing. I forgot hot sauce, I forgot to pick up pepper, all that good stuff, but you know, that's okay. It is a meal after all, and that's what I'm going for. So I will try it out. <laughs> well, I got a piece of fish. Hmm. <laughs> the trout's excellent. It, it's very good. I mean, I, I love trout, so this, for me, is a good meal. I just wish I had a utensil. I'm starting to think TSA stole that from me, so I'm gonna blame that on them for now. It's not a big deal. I can make do, but it's gonna be a process of eating it. <laughs> it turned out really well, uh, so I decided to actually use pliers to do this. Like I said, I have no game plan. Turned out good. I mean, the view is spectacular. spectacular. And these pliers are uh, somewhat efficient, I guess. It is very good. I'm enjoying it. Anyway, just thought I'd show you how I'm eating this. Got one thing. It's uh, Kern Valley local something, you know. <laughs> I'm not gonna say exactly what, but. Hmm. Props to you, Kern Valley. This is really good. Well done, I'm gonna. So I'm not just setting up the beds here. That door's kind of strange. But so anyway, this kind of slides up. Uh, I didn't have so much in the way. Anyway, so what happens is that opens. No, it stays open too. Pull that, and that slides in, and just sinks underneath. Something like that. So, that was the idea. 
this is gonna make up my bed even though it's full of stuff. And <laughs> once I set up that air mattress, it's gonna stay like this. And I'll essentially have a bed for the whole trip. That just cost the price of this vehicle, which was like $300 for a week. Not bad. So I've already discovered one great thing about this door. So I'm about to make my bed here. You don't have to close it from the outside. So I can just crawl in here, do a little something like that. And the door closes. I mean, look. How cool is that? I mean, <laughs> unnecessary, but if I have it, I might as well use it. So yeah, I'm gonna make my bed. I'm just gonna have a bunch of clothing here. Probably there, actually. I'm facing that way, so I'm gonna put a sleeping bag down, a uh, pad, I also have a pillow. And yeah, we're gonna call this place home for the night, and this van is home for the next week. Uh, but the view is gonna be spectacular in the morning. I mean, you can just see it out there right now. And then out here. Okay, let's see. I even brought a pillow. Why not? You know, camping out of a van, I don't have to rough it. Let's see the back. That can go here. Yep. I'll give you guys some more light while I'm doing this. It's hard for you guys to see anything because of that camera. I'll upgrade. I'll get a better camera one day. But for now, that's going to have to suffice. Okay, so I brought a sleeping pack. This has a hole in it. I'm gonna have to deal with that. Of course, I got some light. Got the batteries in it first. So, got my sleeping pad. And uh, a very thin bag. I mean, this is like <laughs> maybe a 60 degree bag. And that's the pad. <laughs> this is uh, lights. This is essentially the idea. And then, just to help it out a little bit, I've got also a blanket. I mean, it will get colder at night, even though I am in a very hot environment. The nights will be cool, around 60, 65. Which I say cool, that's that's like the high in Maine right now, so not exactly cool. But you get my point. Might as well have it. Since I'm kind of luxury camping, I'm not exactly roughing it here. I could bring extra gear, including this. Which is really nice to have, but super unnecessary when you're hiking. It's just a little blow up pillow, essentially. Normally what I do is I just use my hoodie or something, but since I'm in a van, And there we go, a camping pillow. Doesn't get much better than that. So there's my bed. That is where I'll be sleeping for the next week. And now that I have this set up, it can stay that way. I'll get this more organized, so I'll have things set up, like my clothing set out and whatnot, so it's not so chaotic. Of course, lights too, very helpful. This is, uh, I'm excited for this. This is gonna be fun. This is kind of like a little dorm <laughs> sense. It's like those little mini, um, it's like those little mini hotel rooms that you see in China. It's essentially the same concept. I've always wanted to build my own van and I may end up doing it one day. I just think that people that build those, it's, this is such a cool way of uh, kind of a lifestyle. And if you want, I love traveling and this is the cheapest way to do it, so. So one day, I'm gonna build a van, I think, and use that as a way to travel. I think that'd be a lot of fun. There, got some lights. Those are gonna, that's gonna attract some bugs, so the doors are going in. But yeah, so that is uh, generally the setup. I don't know what else I'll show you guys tonight, but I got a headlamp too. You always wanna keep some extra backups around. Light's a crucial component of camping. So you want to have as much as possible. The van makes it easier, but yeah. So a couple lights. Got just a little LED thing. I mean, they're nothing super special, but I don't need anything that special. I'm not doing any night hiking. Hopefully, if I do night hiking, something went seriously wrong. 
And a little, like, this is actually like a miner's light. So, there we have it. Yeah, so I hope you guys enjoy. I will see you guys in the morning. I'm gonna get some rest. The sun's going down. I plan to go to bed early, wake up a little. <laughs> go to, yeah, go to bed early and wake up early. Go back into Kern, get an idea of where to fish, what to fish with, and just gear up a little bit more before I make my way to Arizona. Yeah, so I, I will see you guys in the morning.